Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. What makes an image amazing? Believe it or not, it's usually not the technical quality of the image or even the content, but rather how the image is composed. Composition is how the content of an image is arranged and presented in the image. Good composition gives your images impact and emotion. Poor composition makes the image lackluster and boring. For me, a well-composed image of a common subject is much more interesting than a non-well-composed image or a fish ID shot of an unusual or even rare subject. Here's a very common jellyfish in shallow water at the Blue Heron Bridge in South Florida. They are everywhere and usually ignored. I got this shot with a compact camera with no strobe or artificial illumination. I got under it and you can see the clouds in the sky through Snell's window. Very simple image, however. Also, good composition can be done with a simple inexpensive camera. This is still one of my all-time favorite photos. I took this at dusk in Carousel with a very rudimentary compact camera and a single strobe way back in 2005. The colors and the lighting are not technically perfect, but I just love this composition and the overall limit, image even though there is some sentimental value. Now many of the images in these upcoming videos were taken with a relatively inexpensive compact camera. When I'm underwater, I'm challenged by obstacles such as the water column, which removes contrast color clarity, the need for extensive equipment, and such limited time to spend underwater. During this time, I have to monitor my depth, air supply, navigation, dive buddy location, the first thing I've learned is not to try to shoot everything. And it's really important to take time to find a really good subject that is worth limiting, using my very limited underwater time to photograph. Subject selection, in my opinion, is so important. And it depends not only on how cool the subject is, but also how easy it will be to approach the subject with lack of damage to the reef, the conditions like current visibility, depth, the background of the subject, very important, and also depends on the type of lens I have on my camera and my strobe and lighting app options and things like that. Well then, I slowly approach the subject, then I have to make some basic decisions. Now, when I find a subject, I always have to make several key decisions. Now, some involve aperture, like for depth of field, or lighting, strobe position and direction, and I might tweak my ISO or shutter speed. These are more technical and I've talked about these in previous video videos. But for almost every image, I also have to decide on three things that'll have a huge impact on my composition. And those are proximity, viewpoint, and framing. Now, the next six videos in this series are gonna demonstrate how we can use proximity, viewpoint, and framing to compose our images. Now, proximity, the next video, is going to emphasize getting close and filling the frame, giving our subject the attention it deserves. All right, that's pretty basic. You've heard that many times, but you know what? It's true. Also, with wide angle, getting close to the foreground subject, like in this angelfish, can yield wonderful illusions, making the near objects appear relatively much larger than the more distant object, like in this case, the diver. Now, the next two compositions after proximity are going to deal with viewpoint. These are episodes three and four. Viewpoint and angle of approach. One is we learn to get low and shoot up to allow for a non-distracting background, as you see here. Another is, that I'm going to show another episode, is find an interesting viewpoint or angle of approach for our subject, regardless of the background. Like here I was underneath this turtle and I got a unique angle of him eating. So after proximity and viewpoint, angle of approach, the next three videos are gonna go through framing. One video with framing is gonna be about avoiding the center. There are different ways to avoid the center. One of the most popular is the rule of thirds. We try to avoid putting our subject in dead center like this eye of a yellow on arrow crab. And by moving it outside the center, we can usually make our image more appealing Another video on framing is going to be on negative space to provide context and room to breathe or swim. As we see here, this barracuda has somewhere to go. And avoiding amputations. Unfortunately, I've amputated the fin on the fish 
and the fin on the diver. Very annoying. And finally, another video on framing is going to be about the aspect ratio, horizontal versus vertical, and the actual proportions of the frame, 4x6, 4x5, 9x16, or even square. Here I've made the uh, image more elongated to emphasize just what I wanted to show, a portion of the frogfish face and the lure. And here I made this uh, composition square to show the eel in the lower right and the diver in the upper left. If I made it rectangular or longer, either horizontal or vertical, it would just be not as interesting. The second through seventh video in this series, they're going to deal with proximity, viewpoint, and framing. Because for virtually every image, we must make a decision regarding these three factors. And each of these factors strongly in influences our composition. But after these first videos, I'm going to show more videos regarding additional composition tips and ideas that might further help you when composing your image or might inspire you when trying to locate potential subjects. There are going to be additional videos on other aspects of composition. For instance, keeping things simple, more background considerations, like how to find a good or appealing background, or how to deal with a, just a bad background when we can't get a good background. How do we, what are techniques we can use to get, make, you know, eliminate the bad background. We'll have videos emphasizing things like line, shape, texture, pattern, symmetry, color. We'll talk about using a frame within a frame or the so-called natural frames, emphasizing diagonals, emphasizing depth, or one of my favorites, juxtaposition of similar versus opposite ideas. Many examples will be shown in every video, some bad and hopefully some good, to help explain and cement these concepts home and maybe give you ideas for your own photography. Now, some composition can be done in post-processing, especially altering the framing. And I have to admit, I often, uh, I, I almost always will alter the framing and crop my pictures a little bit. I also use judicious post-processing like removing backscatter and making some minor adjustments in color and contrast and sharpness. However, my time is limited. I generally shoot JPEGs. I don't even usually shoot raw against a lot of people's advice. And I make every effort to modify my images as little as possible and try to get a, a good shot right out of the camera. I think that's much more fun and challenging. Now, some of the composition ideas I'm going to be talking about are repetitive. There are also apparent contradictions that will be re readily apparent. But remember, this is art, not science. There's no right or wrong answer. Every opinion counts, especially your own. Also, try to always experiment, try breaking the rules, and always keep an open mind. By really concentrating on your composition with your own photography, I'm sure you will eventually form your own opinions and develop your own approach, which is probably going to be different than mine. And also, please download a very short, free outline of these videos from my website, The Aquatic Eye, to help you follow along and remember these principles of composition as you're watching them. And I sure hope you had as much fun watching these videos as I did making them. And finally, I'm open to all suggestions, and I'd really appreciate any feedback. So thank you very much. Let's get started.